Hey Defenders, welcome back. In this video, I wanted to show you guys how we can add a little bit of customization to our logos uh, that we have. So as you can see here within my Kibana uh, instance that I've logged into, I have the Open Secure logo here. Um, and also for the Hive, I also have an Open Secure image for our logo. So, so I wanted to show you guys a little bit of quick customization that we can do that adds a, a nice little touch to our web UIs. So let's go ahead and jump into it. For Kibana, it's actually pretty straightforward, um, which is nice. We don't have to do any recompiling of anything or any sizing. Uh, which is pretty nice. Uh, granted, I am using the open search version of Elasticsearch. So if you use the home, if you use the basic license of Elasticsearch, you actually do have to do, there is a hack around to it. Uh, it's a little more complicated and a little more technical. Um, it is possible, but uh, I won't cover that in this video. Maybe if there's some requests, I'll look to create a video uh, that details that. But in this case, I am using a the open search version. So, and it's actually, like I just said, pretty straightforward. So if we go into our kibana.yaml file, you'll see these three properties here. So we have this basic auth login brand image, basic auth login title, and basic auth login subtitle. Um, and so we'll need to populate each of these three fields um, with the data that we want to provide. So for the brand image, this can either be a URL, which is nice. So if you have it hosted uh, on a website or GitHub or wherever you have it hosted, you can just point to the URL link of the file. Or if you store the image locally on the file, you can do it here too. You would just point to your, uh, to your file path. So it could be like temp slash logo.png. Um, I also believe SVGs work as well. I've only tried with a PNG, but there's a ton of converters out there to convert SVG to PNG and vice versa. So uh, whichever way works best for you, uh, whichever file format works best for you, you can do. Um, and then we have our login title, right? And that applies to, well, and so if we follow this link here, uh, again, I just have this hosted on GitHub. But if I open this up within a browser, you'll see the logo that we're pulling in. And if I jump back onto this guy, then yeah, that's created, so that looks good. Uh, the next is the title, and the title refers to this block right here. Um, so here I just have welcome to the open secure demo. Granted, you can you know input whatever text and verbiage you want to include, and then the subtitle will pertain to this block here. Um, and here I just have some login credentials for the demo user. Um, so if I just change this to, so here I'll just comment this out and I'll just say, uh, I'll just input some text so you can see it uh, changing live. Uh, I'll just say, please, so why do I always misspell that? I don't understand that. I always get ahead of myself. Please subscribe and just restart Kibana. And I'll just do a watch to make sure that that comes up successfully. Uh, okay, and that looks good. So if I refresh this now, we should now see the text as please subscribe. And there we go. Um, so pretty straightforward, uh, pretty easy to do, which is nice. Uh, it's a nice little feature that you can do to add a little bit of customization. And now for the Hive, uh, the Hive's a little more complex. You actually have to recompile uh, the Java that is is that is responsible for starting up the Hive service, um, but it's not too too bad. Uh, there are a few steps, so I, I have a notepad out where I've already uh, pre-done this. But uh, this is the server that's running the Hive. Uh, you will need to install Java development tools. Uh, that can just be done with just a yum install Java devel. Um, I, I've already done that, so I'll, I'll skip that step. 
Um, we then need to CD into opt the hive lib. Uh, granted, this is done, of course, after you install the hive or everything and everything. And depending on the version of the hive that you're running, uh, you'll see a different version number here. If you're not running on the latest version, the latest version is this 4.1.10. But if you are on a, an earlier version, you can just grep for the logo.svg uh, within this whole directory here. And you'll see that it exists within this path. Um, so what we're going to do is just copy this out. If my server can catch up with me here, it's running a little slow. Uh, we can just copy this to temp. And it's asking to override just because I've already done this. Um, but that's fine. I'll CD back into temp. And then let's go ahead and stop the hive with just a systemctl. And then this is where the Java development tools come into place. Um, so we'll run this command uh, and oh, I need to change that to a 10. So we'll run this jar xf, this org, and we should now see that it has created a front end directory for us and it has. So now we'll cd into front end ls that out we'll cd into images here and you'll see our pngs and svgs that make up the the uh the hive web page here and what we'll do is so i actually already copied my open secure svg and open secure png um to this to this box um so you'll need to copy them over to your to your server and then i'll just copy temp open secure dot SVG to logo dot SVG. I will say yes. I will copy. I'll now copy the PNG one to logo dot PNG and we'll say yeah. And then we'll copy the SVG again to logo dot white dot svg and the dot white one is actually what i believe is responsible for this guy here um, no it's actually the logos dot svg um, is the main one that's responsible for that so uh, if you ever want to change like some images um, you don't know where they would exist uh, you can always just open the inspect tool within whatever browser you're using and just search for uh, that particular image so that, that's a quick little trick if you want to find out, well, where exactly would it reside uh, on the server? You can do it that way. Um, and then let me not get ahead of myself here. Uh, okay, so let's copy that. And I'll say, yep. And then now we'll just run uh, the jar command again. And then I will cd just back into temp. And we will run the jar cf command um, on that jar file here and then just output it to the current directory where we are which is uh, just the temp directory and okay so now that that's done we will now copy this jar file back into the hive so opt the hive the hive and then lib and yes we'll say yes to overwrite it and then we will just start the hive And I'll go ahead and tail the hive log files just to make sure that that starts back up correctly. And okay, looks like it's restarted. And we'll just refresh and boom, you will have your new image. Um, it might be, you might have, you might be unsure if it's not changing, um, but it may just be because your browser has cached the image. So just go ahead and open up an incognito window if you are seeing that and reload and you should see your new image. So again, just kind of a, a quick little video, but I wanted to show you guys how you could add some customization and, and some uniqueness to your web interfaces. So I appreciate you guys hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.